Today I give thanks to God for you. I give thanks to God for your life and your witness. I give thanks to God for the life and witness that you shared this past week as we hosted shelter. I have been, over the course of my life in ministry, involved with many shelters, and unfortunately many of them treat their guests like cattle. You're herded in, you're told where to sleep, some food is slopped on a plate, and you're sent out the door. Or perhaps you're treated as if you have leprosy or some other horrible disease. No one wants to speak to you. No one wants to touch you. No one wants to interact with you. It's this invisible barrier between the guests and the hosts. But I give thanks to God to you and for you because you remembered those baptismal promises to seek and serve Christ in all people. You remembered the baptismal promise to respect the dignity of every human being. It was a great shelter week because of the Holy Spirit working through each of you. We had about 40 people each night and over half of our shelter guests had never been here before, so the first couple days, everyone was not quite sure what to expect. People kind of came in with their heads down, and they ate their food and settled down for the night. But by Wednesday, things had started to change. Our guests recognized that we did not treat them like cattle, that they were human beings that we were interested in. The care and concern behind the scenes from people who did set up to people who cleaned toilets to people who did whatever it took to make the environment hospitable was evident. The food. I really wanted to eat the food. <laughs> And I did on a number of nights. Food that we would want to eat is what was served. And the shopping. Shopping is what we call going down and getting to pick new or gently used items. And you get to choose whatever you want, whatever meets your needs. Do you know how much dignity is given to a person to be able to make their own choices and to say what they need and to find what they need and to get it. And there you all were listening, listening to the chatter and conversation as people shopped about, oh, well, they didn't have this and I really need it. And suddenly in the day between the time that comment was heard and the next night of shopping, suddenly and miraculously, the item that a person was looking for showed up. We had a man who had size 14 feet. And he desperately needed a new pair of shoes. I'll not forget the night when he went back shopping and they said, we think we have shoes for you tonight. And there was that new pair of tennis shoes, size 14. And he's walking down the aisle going, oh, my feet feel like they're on air. <laughs> How awesome. How incredibly awesome that was. The interaction, the conversation, the people beginning to say how much we love them and how much they love us. And on Wednesday night, they were invited to come for our feast of the presentation of the Eucharist called Candlemas. The whole place filled with dozens and dozens of candles. We talked about how Jesus was the light of the world and how Simeon proclaimed that the light had come into the darkness. One of our guests asked if he could read the reading that night. He felt so comfortable and he did a beautiful job. People came forward for healing prayers, which were very moving and powerful. Homeless guests being prayed for with members of the parish with their hands laid on them. 
parishioners being prayed for with homeless guests' hands laid on them. People coming as they came in the door saying, come in, come in, we're so glad that you're here. And every person given one of these beeswax candles that we use in our prayer chapel. Because the service of candlemas ends with everyone lighting a candle, remembering that as the light came into the world, Jesus pours that light in us, and that we're to carry that light out into the darkness. One woman started crying while she held her lighted candle, and I asked what was the matter, and she said, I've always seen this in movies on TV, but I've never been in a church where I got to light a candle and hold it. I will treasure this forever. And then as we were getting ready to process out, we were going to sing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And somebody said, Father, it's not a little light. It's a great light. The light we get from God is great. So we need to change the words. We need to sing this great light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. And will you let me lead it? And there we sang. This great light of mine, I'm going to let it shine as we go back out into the night. I give thanks to God for you. For this annual remembrance of what it means to be salt and light. This incubator in this laboratory where we learn and relearn what it means to be salt and light to the people that God loves so desperately. So now, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. All that's left is for us to take what we have learned this past week and to go out. Wherever you are, wherever you go, be the flavor of God. Wherever you go, shine the light into the darkness. The darkness will never overcome it.